If you want to hack your PS5, do not update it. Indie games should be getting better on the PlayStation 5. You can play multiplayer games for free this weekend. And did PlayStation just acquire another studio? Let's jump into the PlayStation news. And before we do that, make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications set to all. Sony's been in a weird spot with indie developers for a few years now, which is kind of crazy because going into the PS4 generation, they were all about making that console pretty much the go-to indie machine. PlayStation Plus had new indies every month. I remember specifically Hotline Miami 2 was on there when it came out day one, which was awesome. And then things kind of just went away. And it was a huge deal that they had all these indie games too, by the way, because in the 360 and PS3 generation, Xbox was wiping the floor with Sony in terms of indie games. They had Xbox Arcade, where you were getting amazing games that people loved, specifically games like Limbo, Miss Splosion Man, Super Meat Boy, Castle Crashers. There were so many games on the Xbox Live Arcade that eventually made their way to the PS3 and PS4. But man, when you thought of indie games, you thought of Xbox. So to see PlayStation take that crown from them in the PS4 generation, arguably PlayStation's best generation ever, and then just completely give up on it towards the end of that generation and going into the PS5 one, people were just kind of surprised. Things really came to a head over the summer when Sony decided they were gonna shut down the online stores for the Vita and the PS3, which was insane because people actually had Vita games in development that they were like, uh, do we cancel these? Are we gonna be able to release them? What's going on here? And then Sony apparently had a huge change of heart and they've been working really hard to have a relationship with indie developers since then. Basically every big issue that indie developers have has pretty much been solved. The big one being that when they reach out to Sony, it would take a long time for them to hear back. Now they're hearing back within 24 or 48 hours. They were also upset that their games weren't getting featured on the PlayStation YouTube channel and Sony's apparently done a way better job at that over the past few months. And they wanted their games more prominently featured on the PS5 version of the PlayStation store because people were getting frustrated that when you would open up the store and go to new games, Games, you would see stuff that wasn't even out yet at the time, like Deathloop that was months away. And apparently Sony has done a better job at that too. And they've been signing friendlier quote unquote deals with the indie devs to make it cheaper for them to get their stuff on the store or port stuff over from other consoles. Honestly, when I think about why this could be happening, I feel like it's the same reason we got so many indie games on the PS4. Sony's got to really beef up PS Plus. They got to get more games on the PS5 specifically because there just aren't that many exclusive games for it. So getting indie developers, these people who are putting out games quicker and faster and have a shorter shelf life for sure than more AAA games, but get people excited to play them, that just makes a whole lot of sense. And a real world example that I just saw is that Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon just released on the PlayStation Store and that was getting a ton of press from them. And you can see it right when you open the store. So that's pretty cool. Speaking of the PlayStation Store and PS Plus, if you haven't re-upped your service in a little while, you might want to go check out the PlayStation Store right now because a full year of it is half off, which is a pretty good deal. We saw the same deal around Black Friday. I think it honestly went as low as like 25 bucks for a full year of PS Plus, but you basically need it to do a lot of the stuff you wanna do on your PS5 or PS4. So if you haven't bought PS Plus in a while, it's definitely worth checking out. And Sony seems to be saying, yeah, we don't do this sale that often and we're really encouraging people to go check it out because this weekend only, a lot of multiplayer games, well, every multiplayer game is going to be free to play. The reason I said a lot of multiplayer games is because the biggest multiplayer games like Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone do not require PS Plus to begin with, but other stuff like Grand Theft Auto Online or Call of Duty Vanguard, they do require uh, PS Plus. So if you don't have it and you've been looking to jump back in, you can play for free this weekend and then you can turn around and buy a year of PlayStation Plus. Honestly, it's a pretty good marketing move from Sony. And by the way, the deal on the PlayStation Plus membership ends on the 19th of December, so make sure you jump in and buy it before that if you want to do that. So the Cold War between Xbox and Sony silently buying studios in the background is still going and Sony is continuing their trend of buying support studios instead of full on AAA developers. Their most recent acquisition is a studio called Valkyrie Entertainment, which honestly you probably never heard of and that's okay. They've only made one game of their own called Guns Up, which I do remember from the PS4 days, but they're mostly, again, a support studio. And some of the games they've worked on, you've definitely heard of. They've worked on Twisted Metal, they've worked on Infamous Second Son, they've worked on God of War, God of War Ragnarok, they worked on Batman Arkham Origins, Injustice 2, uh, Shadow of War, Halo Infinite, and a ton of other games. So yeah, this is a pretty technically savvy studio, and I see what Sony's doing here, right? They bought these guys, they bought Nixes. The reason they bought Nixes is because Nixes is a good studio at porting games to PC, and obviously Sony is porting a lot more games to PC. The reason they're buying these guys is probably because they're a really good technically savvy support studio, and Sony has a lot of AAA games in development, and this studio just helped Microsoft finish 
diminish Halo Infinite. So if you take them off the board, Microsoft can't use them in the future, and then they're just sitting there helping you finish your biggest games, like God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7, you know, all the stuff we haven't even heard of yet. That'll help games get out quicker and be less buggy, which is what Sony's known for. So I think this is a good purchase overall, and honestly, I'm kind of glad it's not a AAA studio, because I'm getting kind of sick of like every game I like and I'm anticipating being an Xbox exclusive at this point. Like the fact that the Outer Worlds came out on PS5 and got people really excited for a sequel only for them to hear, thanks for getting these sales numbers up guys, but you're not gonna be seeing the sequel on your console. That's just kind of a bummer, you know? PlayStation actually said they have 25 games in development right now and having a support studio like this to help people finish up their games and remove bugs is a really good way to have them take risks, right? Because if you only have all of your few studios spread very thin, it's harder to take risks because if you lose money, the studio basically gets shut down, which is not good. But Sony's been pretty decent about not shutting studios down. I know during the PS4 generation, they went on a tear where if a game didn't sell well, they basically shut the studio down, like the Drive Club people, Evolution, they're gone now, and so are the people who made Wipeout. But Sony seems to be changing for the better, buying studios instead of shutting them down, so I'm not gonna fault them for that, you know? The interesting thing here is that Bluepoint was another studio that was considered sort of a support studio because they really only helped out other studios and did remakes for PlayStation. But when PlayStation bought them just a few months ago, they said, yeah, now that you're under the PlayStation umbrella, you guys can go make an original game if you want to. And Bluepoint was like, yeah, we'll do that. It doesn't seem like that's happening here with Valkyrie Entertainment, but I like where Sony's head's at, right? They're saying, okay, you, these guys at Bluepoint, they've worked on two of the biggest games in PlayStation history being remade and they did a perfect job. I'm talking about quality wise, not sales numbers wise, by the way, because we all know Demon Souls did not do gangbuster sales on the PS3. But anyway, they're looking at these guys and they're like, yeah, you guys, you put your time in. Now you can go make an original game. So I feel like if Valkyrie does a good job helping out all these other studios make their new games, they can take all the knowledge they gain and then make their own game. And it's just kind of like a good synergistic relationship that PlayStation is setting up and I like it. So we've been talking about PlayStation's getting hacked a lot in the past few months, but this hack is legitimate, dude. Like this thing is real. So essentially a hacker group was able to get into the PS4's 9.0 firmware, which is actually very recent. Like as of two weeks ago, if you haven't updated your PS4, you're able to do this hack and they're calling it Poob S4, which I don't want to say anymore. I'm just going to call it the PS4 hack, but it's a really good hack because it allows you to install custom firmware. And these developers have gotten into the PS4 before and allowed people to do the same thing, but they're usually working on super old firmware that no one really has anymore. So by the time the hack comes out, you just got to basically be lucky enough to have a PS4 that's on old enough firmware to install the hack. But this time they're working on a build that's like two weeks old. Well, it's older than that. It was updated two weeks ago. So if you're on that build, like you haven't been playing your PS4 because you got a PS5, you're probably able to hack your PS4 and install some custom firmware. Now I'm not gonna try and encourage pirating games, but that's like a huge thing you can do when you install custom firmware on your PS4. But another thing you can do is install emulators and play old games that you might have laying around like Super Nintendo games, but you don't have a Super Nintendo anymore. You can just install an emulator on your PS4 and go nuts with that. Now, the interesting thing about this hack is that they say it should work also on the PS5, but they can't test it because the guy who's like the leader of this group of hackers has not been able to get a PS5 yet. So that's why they didn't release the hack for the PS5. And I think a lot of people out there definitely feel that dude's pain. I haven't plugged my PS4 in in a while, so I could definitely do this hack. I just don't really feel like digging it out right now, but it seems like it's actually pretty easy to do. All you do is just go to GitHub this person's GitHub page, download the hack, put it on a USB drive, and then install the custom firmware on your PS4. So if you've never done anything like this and you already have a PS5 and you don't really mind maybe bricking a PS4, it might be something fun to try out. I'm really curious to see how this shakes out because Sony absolutely hates hacks. It's the reason they killed the PSP while it was basically in its prime. It's the reason that they shut down the Vita store over the summer or said they were going to and then walked it back. They really hate when their consoles get hacked to the point where that's why they basically killed the Vita by making it use proprietary memory cards instead of SD cards. They wanna put all of these different ways in place to make it harder for hackers to get into the console because they don't want their games pirated. And honestly, I see why they feel that way, but also as the person buying the PS5, I just hope this doesn't result in it getting harder for me. I remember back in the PS3 days that things got so bad with pirating and uh, people buying used games that Sony and a bunch of other developers came up with this thing called an online pass where because every game at that point in time needed to have a multiplayer mode for some reason, the only way you could
could access it was with a $10 multiplayer pass that would come with the game new, but then you would have to buy it if you bought the game used, and that sucked. So yeah, like I mentioned, this hack seems pretty easy to do. You can just Google it. It's for the 9.0 firmware on your PS4, and if you want to keep being able to hack your PS4, I would just stop updating it now. Anyway, guys, that's all the PlayStation news I have for you today. Anyway, guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.